So sounds like one of the tricks that bacteria and viruses can use is to look like they're our cells, so that it's harder for us to attack them. Is that right? Yeah. So it's a means of what we call a means of what we call immune escape. So immune escape. Yeah. So these organisms can either take in host genome or genome pieces, or can mimic these genes and then express. Um, proteins that allow it to manipulate the host. So they put system. on a disguise that makes them look like us, basically. Yeah. And then when we attack them, what happens? Well, some bad things can happen. So first... Well, what's an example, first of all? What are some bacteria oh, or viruses that do Okay, this? so herpes viruses, for example, take in a lot of host DNA. They're a DNA-based virus, so it's very easy for them to do this. And they... So they grab DNA from our cells. Yeah, and they are well known across hosts to have taken up uh, genes that are responsible for um, triggering signaling cascades in... in host cells. So one of the things that they can do is manipulate almost any genetic pathway, hypothetically, based on the genes that they have taken from us. Uh -huh. Basically, they can go incognito as a so result. So that's why they can live in our bodies for generate for decades. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. And they can live, they also choose, so herpes is similar to a number of other pathogens, so the plague bacterium would be another, Yersinia pestis, which causes plague, is another really good example of this. Herpes likes to live in immune privileged zones. So it likes to live in these places where T and B cells can't get to it. So and it's kind of like living in the police station or something. Yeah, right? it'd, be like a, it'd be like a burglar living in the police station. Like you're not going to find him. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it's the last so place let's slow down just a little bit and see what the plague bacteria does. Where does it go? So it homes typically to lymph nodes. And lymph nodes are these special police station protected zones where yeah. regular immune responses don't work. Exactly. So lymph nodes are protected because they're very, very important to the initiation of adaptive immunity. Okay. So we believe that as a result, T cells and B cells are not active and targeted there. And generally speaking, um, ki uh, immune activities that would be engaged in killing something are downplayed in these zones. And so the plague bacteria goes there and says, hey, you guys can't get me here. It, yeah. And it grows. Free party space. Yeah, exactly. And it grows. It, it, it kills the cell that it shows up in, and then it just replicates and takes over. And there's something really gross called a bubo. Yeah, so a bubo is, a, is an old name for a lymph node. And buboes specifically, when we refer to bubonic plague, are swollen lymph nodes that grow so heavy under the weight of the bacteria that they pop through the skin and it leads to acral necrosis. It's a leads to what? Acral necrosis. So it leads I to I bet there's um, another name for that. Well we just call it tissue necrosis. <laughs> so big raw ugly spot. Big raw ugly a very difficult condition to control afterwards. So that's Herpes and plague, are there other bacteria or viruses that do clever things like this? Yeah, so Klebsiella also uh, seems to have a bunch of genes. So that, that causes pneumonia. Yes, it causes, sorry, it causes pneumonia often. Uh, what it has um, are, it appears to have mimicked uh, human genes, also manipulating cascades. Um, but the danger of Klebsiella, we know that it's so successful at mimicking these things. When a T and B cell response is initiated, it's sometimes initiated against stuff that belongs to us. Ooh. Yeah, which is not not good. That it's a it's thought to be a potential. It's almost like holding hostages or something. Yeah. You know, the police try to shoot at the bad guy, but they've got a bunch of our own cells. They're, yeah, and they can't the tell front. the difference. It would be if the police literally couldn't tell the difference between the hijackers and the and the people which being happens. hijacked. Yeah. Right. So uh, in in this particular case, then um, what's happening is that the T cells and B cells are educated against the foreign thing that the innate immune cells have presented to them, and they then come in and kill anything that looks like it. And you have so that would be hard on your lungs, actually. Yeah, is or right? any number of other things. So your own immune system attacks your own tissues. Yeah. So the things that Klebsiella has that are, mimic humans actually are found across a lot of different tissues. So it wouldn't just be lungs. It could be any number of other tissues. And so it's potentially a trigger for a, a large number of autoimmune diseases. And one other nasty bug that does this is strep. Yes, so strep, which I know a little less about. <laughs> but it does cause strep throat. It does certainly And some strep people who get strep get rheumatic fever and scarlet fever, which is an inflammation of the skin. Right. And obsessive compulsive disorder, which I think is the same mechanism you've been talking very, about. Very, very similar. Yeah. An overt response to strep can lead to these problems as well, too, right? So you can have rheumatic fever that stems from just a gross over response to, to strep, right. too. So these are very clever 
arms races, really, between the host and the pathogen generating really complicated things. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. With very, very interesting implications for humans. Right.